Way up north on the Norwegian island of Spitsbergen in the Arctic Svalbard archipelago nestled deep inside a mountain lies the Svalbard Global Seed Bank. Just 1,300 kilometers from the North Pole, the bunker was created by the Norwegian government in 2008 with the sole purpose of creating a safe haven for the nations of the world to use for long-term seed storage. As well as acting much like an actual bank, the vault itself is designed to withstand climate change, natural disasters, and even the possibility of war. The Svalbard Global Seed Vault was built by and entirely funded by the government of Norway in 2008. Its construction cost 45 million Norwegian kroner, about $8.8 .8 million US. Today, more than 10 years later, the upkeep costs are shared by the Norwegian government and the Crop Trust. The Trust receives a great deal of its funding from organizations such as the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, as well as support from various government bodies worldwide. The vault was started by the Consultative Group on International Agriculture Research, or CGIAR, along with conservationist Carrie Fowler. Carrie being the former executive director of the Crop Trust. The Crop Trust is the only global organization currently working to effectively preserve crop diversity conservation. We will go deeper into this later on. The main idea of the vault was to create a place in which the nations of the world could send duplicates of their stored seed samples as a backup for the many other gene banks found around the world. The vault's design ensures the safety of the samples during the event of large-scale global crisis. Svalbard has the capacity to store 4.5 million varieties of seeds and 500 of each different variety. This amounts to a total capacity of 2.5 billion seeds. The vault acts like a bank in the sense that the various organizations around the world can make deposits and withdrawals at different times throughout the year. The vault itself is only visible as a door protruding from the side of a barren mountain on a sparsely populated stretch of Arctic island. Inside a lengthy tunnel filled with ventilation piping leads through a series of heavy-duty doors until you reach the three main containment vaults. As you travel deeper into the mountain and further down the hallway, the walls become increasingly coated in frost. Because of where and how the building was constructed, it is theoretically impermeable to bombs and other disasters in the event of a global conflict. On top of this, because the vault was constructed deep within the mountains, permafrost layer is naturally at around negative 4 or 5 degrees Celsius. This helps preserve the samples stored within. The vaults themselves are kept at a very cool negative 18 degrees to hinder any degradation to the seeds. Even in the event that power was cut off to the facility, it is said to have the capacity to continue operating and maintaining its cool temperatures for up to 100 years. At the end of 2016, the Arctic Circle reached record temperatures, and in place of what normally would have been light snowfall, Spitsbergen Island experienced rain and melting snow. This eventually caused water to flood into the vault's tunnel entrance and freeze as it flowed through its cold hallways. Although the seeds were left untouched and the Norwegian government was able to chisel out all of the ice, the event raised some serious concerns about the vault's viability in the future with current climate change trends. The Norwegian government put forward 100 million kroner or 13 million US dollars in order to upgrade the vault and protect it from rising temperatures. A spokesperson from the vault said to The Guardian on the topic, we'll be tight and dry and we'll deal with whatever climate change gives us. That being said, the vault originally was left unmanned as it would be during a crisis. Since the flood, however, there is now personnel stationed at Svalbard 24-7. So why build a doomsday bunker for the world seeds? Well, one of the most prudent answers is fairly obvious. If something were to happen to the world's food supply, such as nuclear war, drought, or disease causing a mass extinction of plant life, we would not last long as a species. So having a secure place on Earth that can harbor a backup plan for the very essence of life on this planet is probably in our best interest. 
But why it acts as a bank, allowing its depositors to make withdrawals at will, all ties into the same mission as the founding parties, the Crop Trust and Carey Fowler. Their mission is to educate and advocate for the diversification of plant species within agricultural practices around the world, and not just in the event of a global catastrophe. Carrie Fowler is one of the leading voices today in the field of global food preservation with his career in agricultural research dating back to the 70s. Having served as the head of the Crop Trust from 2005 to 2012, Carrie gained the position necessary to be one of the leading figures in the Svalbard Seed Vault's development. Under Carrie's tenure as executive director of the Crop Trust, he, along with the combined efforts of seed vaults in over 70 countries, were able to rescue over 80,000 species of crop from extinction. It was under Carey's term as well that the Millennium Seed Bank of Kew Gardens was founded, as well as the Consultative Group on International Agricultural Research. Diversity in agriculture and consumer culture in regards to produce is a looming issue that many are currently unaware of. Luckily, people like Carey Fowler and organizations like CGIAR are on the leading edge of the growing movement. In the past 100 years alone, 93% of fruit and vegetable varieties in North America have become extinct. Crop Trust and other organizations like it exist through private and government funding and are some of the only institutions attempting to ensure global food security through genetic diversification. Due to rising demand for produce, population growth and trends in food, farming has changed a lot in past decades. Large-scale corporate-level grocers and food providers expect certain standards from their providers when it comes to fruit or vegetable size, color, or shape, which in turn pushed producers to decrease their crops' diversity in order to foster a consistent product. Vast amounts of produce end up in the trash every day around the world due to its appearance decreasing its sellability. Although the fruit or vegetable in question does not differ in taste, nutrition, or texture in any way, people don't like to buy ugly food. On top of that, consumers have come to expect seeing certain things on their menus or shopping lists, and therefore would be shocked to receive something that did not bear resemblance to what they have come to expect. For instance, did you know that there are a great deal of different types of carrots, and that they all taste very similar? There are red carrots, purple carrots, white carrots, and yellow carrots, but unless you visit a specialty store, you'll only find orange carrots in supermarkets. The danger in this trend towards uniform produce is that it removes variety from the gene pool found across the region from which the plant in question is grown. This opens the crop up to being entirely wiped out by a single wave of disease, pests, or insects. So if an apple farmer grows 500 trees on their farm, they likely grow specifically one type of apple throughout the whole farm. This is because it is also likely that they could sell their entire crop to a single buyer with more ease. However, if an insect that specifically ate that type of apple came through the region, the farmer would lose their entire crop in one sweep. So if instead of farming a single variety of apple, the farmer instead planted five different types of trees on their property, they not only have created an insurance policy for themselves, but they've also contributed to increased biodiversity. This philosophy is essentially the agenda that the Crop Trust is pushing by educating farmers on the importance of biodiversity and supporting seed exchange programs around the world. There are currently around 1,700 different seed banks and vaults around the world, and in 2012, the International Center for Agricultural Research in the Dry Areas, or ACARDA, withdrew around 150 boxes of seeds from the Svalbard Global Seed Vault because the organization's headquarters were moved from Aleppo to Beirut due to the civil war in Syria. Since then, they have started to replenish their stores within the bank. Currently, the bank holds seeds from 76 different depositors or countries. There are over 6,000 species of seeds and over 1 million seed deposits. Within the vaults, the seeds are stored in an array of boxes, all slightly different and labeled with the country of origin and deposit information. Included within, there are even six boxes submitted by the DPRK, or Democratic People's Republic of Korea. 
The Vault website includes a complete roster of the various depositors involved and what they have deposited. Interestingly, the Norwegian government included in their terms for depositing in the bank that no genetically modified or narcotic seeds were allowed to be contained within. Norway, along with much of Europe, takes a stronger stance against GMO produce, which is likely the reasoning behind their exclusion from eligibility. Large agricultural corporations today modify plant genetics for a wide array of reasons. Some modifications remove seeds from fruit or create vegetables and fruits that can grow to many times their natural size. These modifications are generally in the interest of creating a more desirable product in the grocery store. Before the public eye began shedding light on what exactly companies like Monsanto were doing to plants, consumers would be hard-pressed to not buy the tomato that was two times as large as its organic counterpart for the same price. However, with health trends pushing educated consumers more and more towards organic, locally grown produce, people like Carrie Fowler hope to see GMO products become less and less popular. And along with them, an increased level of organic diversity within grocery stores. The Vavilov Institute of Plant Industry is the oldest seed bank in the world and is located in St. Petersburg, Russia. It was originally created in 1894 by Nikolai Vavilov, of which the institution is named after. Nikolai was one of the first scientists in the world to recognize the importance of genetic diversity in agriculture and is credited for being one of the original voices that brought attention to the subject. Today, the facility is the only one of its kind in Russia and much like many other seed vaults around the world, contains thousands of specimens. In the UK, you can find the Millennium Seed Bank, inside of which they have successfully housed every single native species of plant to the country, including a few hundred endangered species. Around the world, scientists and farmers are working to further our understanding of renewable agriculture. Seed exchanges take place in cities and towns around the globe all the time. Farmers will organize events and various workers of the agriculture business all gather and exchange seeds. The events act as a platform to educate as well as a marketplace to help farmers increase the biodiversity of their own plantations or farms. And on smaller scales, inner city growers and hobby gardeners are beginning to cultivate more and more of their own produce with rising costs of food. These seed exchanges work in the same way on a smaller scale. Gardeners will harvest seeds from their crops, dry them, and bring them to locally organized events to make trades. Consumer awareness when it comes to grocery shopping is probably the most effective tool we have in preserving our world's edible plant biodiversity. If you're interested in helping to increase agricultural diversity and in the process help to preserve our world's food supply for tomorrow's generation, it can be as simple as making small changes to your buying habits. Buy your produce from farmers markets when you can, buy the less pretty vegetables in your local grocer over the shiny pretty ones, and most importantly, keep yourself informed. You can also participate in or organize seed exchanges if you garden. Whether or not you are a farmer or a gardener or simply a consumer, the Svalbard Global Seed Vault was built in the interest of humans in general. Hopefully the vault itself will never need to have its strength tested against a global crisis, but in the event that it does, we should all sleep a little easier knowing that there are people out there looking out for the better interests of our food supply. <laughs>